issue and every gay person it's different and I think that to to speak the church the black church or white church or any kind of church you want to call it are all the same is totally I'm okay because I never told you I was perfect that's why T.D. Jakes was there to try to fix his image ain't no money like church money look at T.D. Jakes your point of view your opinion do you take him serious as a pastor do I take him serious? That's not my type of past. T.G. Jakes, born on June 9, 1957, in South Charleston, West Virginia, is a name synonymous with transformation, faith, and leadership. One of the most prominent preachers of the 21st century, Jakes is not only a pastor, but also a writer, filmmaker, and motivational speaker with a global influence. As the founder and bishop of the Potter's House in Dallas, Texas, a megachurch with over 30,000 members, Jakes has reached millions worldwide through his sermons, books, television shows, and films. His ministry is rooted in his own experiences growing up in a working-class family where faith, hard work, and resilience were core values. Despite financial hardships, Jakes' early life was shaped by his father's battle with kidney disease which taught him the importance of perseverance, responsibility, and caring for others. Raised in a Christian home, Jakes felt a calling to ministry from a young age and began preaching at small storefront churches in West Virginia. These humble beginnings allowed him to develop his distinctive preaching style, emotionally charged, passionate, and deeply relatable. His early sermons addressed real-life struggles, from relationship issues to financial difficulties, emphasizing the power of faith to overcome adversity. A key message in Jake's ministry has been the idea that every individual has a divine purpose, and his teachings on personal accountability and the transformative power of faith have resonated with countless individuals seeking hope and guidance. In 1996, Jake's relocated to Dallas, where he founded the Potter's House, a church that would grow rapidly under his leadership. He infused his sermons with a spirit of empowerment, addressing practical issues like financial stress, relationship troubles, and personal growth, while creating a space for spiritual healing. The church's success was fueled by Jake's strategic use of media, which enabled him to reach a broader audience through television broadcasts on networks like TBN. The Potter's House became known not only for its vibrant worship services, but also for its outreach programs focused on social justice, such as combating homelessness and providing financial literacy. Jake's influence extends beyond the pulpit through his books and films. His 1997 book Woman, Thou Art Loosed became a breakthrough in Christian literature, offering women a platform to discuss topics like abuse, self-worth, and healing. He later expanded his writing to focus on topics like destiny and leadership, with books such as Destiny, Step Into Your Purpose and Soar, Build Your Vision from the Ground Up, offering practical advice for personal and professional growth. Through his films, Jakes has further cemented his legacy as a cultural leader, addressing themes of faith, community, and overcoming adversity. Movies like Not Easily Broken, 2009, and Miracles from Heaven, 2016, explored these themes in powerful ways, earning widespread acclaim for their emotional depth and inspirational messages. Despite his many accomplishments, Jake's personal life has not been without challenges. As a father of five, he has navigated the complexities of raising children under public scrutiny. The media's intense focus on his family reached a high point when his daughter, Sarah, became pregnant as a teenager, drawing significant public attention. Jake spoke openly about the emotional and spiritual challenges he faced during this time, offering a message of grace, forgiveness, and redemption. His daughter later became a pastor herself, demonstrating the power of resilience and self-transformation. Jake's has also faced criticism, particularly regarding his association with the prosperity gospel which emphasizes financial success as a sign of divine favor. While some view his teachings on prosperity as controversial, Jakes has remained steadfast in his message that faith can lead to both spiritual and practical success. 
He has used his own experiences of betrayal, loss, and personal hardship to reinforce his teachings on grace, forgiveness, and the importance of persevering in the face of adversity. One of the most significant losses in Jake's life was the death of his mother, Adith, in 1999. Her passing had a profound impact on him, shaking his faith to its core. Yet, in the midst of grief, Jakes found solace in the very principles of faith and perseverance that he had preached for years. Her death, he has said, was a turning point, deepening his empathy and strengthening his resolve to continue his ministry. Through all of his challenges, Jakes has remained a beacon of hope for millions, using his personal story to inspire others to overcome their own struggles and find purpose in their journey. Sean Carter is worse. He's smarter. He's patient. He's not sloppy. Just been lining up people he calls friends and stepping to the side while they get hit by the guillotine for 30 years. Despite the controversies and personal hardships, T.D. Jake's legacy as a pastor, author, and filmmaker stands as a testament to the transformative power of faith resilience, and unwavering commitment to one's calling. Paul Carter is just as bad as the dead look. And I know that for a fact. I got the scars to prove it. <laughs> so there's been so many people on the internet trying to figure out where you are. They're watching you. They're, you know, they're doing all types of stuff trying to figure you out. You want to know what a box cutter feels like going into your skin and ripping you? Let me tell you how it feels. Y'all ain't see that Cassie. That's nothing. Uh, so are you are you are you trying to say like Jay Z put hands on you? I'm saying Sean Carter remembers everything he did to me. And he's got it. On it's not surprising, considering Jaguar's well-documented conflict with Jay Z. In one interview, she claimed that he once confronted her with a box cutter in an attempt to get her back while she was singing backup for him. Well, because the Me Too movement was a ruse. It was a setup. It was a scam. I'm saying that now, publicly. Dream Hampton spearheaded the surviving R. Kelly campaign, which full, it, it fueled the Me Too campaign. And that was all funded by Sean Carter to make sure that Robert Kelly went to jail, get his lick back. Why is nobody understanding that Dream Hampton was being financed and ran by Sean Carter. They were able to go and get all of these witnesses because he was there with Robert Kelly. How does Jay-Z sit down with Gail King and she not ask him one question about the intersection between him and Aaliyah and Robert Kelly? This is insane that people keep refusing to see what's right there. Do if the Me Too movement were real, why aren't they speaking now? They've also been very quiet in this time of the Diddler's downfall. Jaguar. Guess they're this... on vacation. I have three victims right now who are willing to give testimony about not only what Mr. Carter has done to them, but his wife as well. They're a nasty little couple. They do nasty things. What do you think happened with Kim Keeping Ford? Keeping people against their will, putting people on planes while they're unconscious. Just like Aaliyah got on that plane, unconscious. There's a lot of things that people don't want to talk about. Like with Jay-Z, there's an undeniable rift between Jaguar and the Carters. Known for sharing controversial claims, Jaguar recently opened up in an interview with Piers Morgan. She alleged that Jay-Z was a key figure behind the hashtag MeToo movement suggesting it was a calculated effort to distance himself from R. Kelly and their alleged past connections. According to her, Jay-Z financed the movement to dissociate himself and suppress evidence of their prior associations. <laughs> said, you know, this is going to be hard for me. Because he was like, because he was throwing, because, you know, because, like, you know, his friends were laughing at him. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. I might have a f up question since we're talking about Aaliyah <laughs> and, and ignore me if it's too much, but do you have any opinion on the Art Kelly situation? Do you think he got railroaded or he he's there, he's where he belongs? Jaguar didn't hold back in her claims, saying what she said with full conviction. 
As previously mentioned, there have been persistent suspicions over the years that Aliyah's death involved foul play. Supporters of these theories have often linked the Carters to the incident, alleging that Jay-Z's supposed obsession with Aliyah fueled Bianca's jealousy. Before Jay-Z's alleged fixation, Aliyah had been married to Jay-Z's close friend R. Kelly. This is the same R. Kelly Jaguar claimed Jay-Z later helped set up to destroy. Adding to the controversy, Aliyah was just 15 years old when R. Kelly coerced her into marriage while he was 27. Although her parents intervened to annul the marriage, it remains unsettling that Jay-Z, aware of the situation, chose to remain silent as his friend committed this act. Despite this, Jay-Z reportedly developed his own fixation on Aliyah, relentlessly. creating further tension. For context, Aliyah was one of the most celebrated stars in the early 2000s. More than just a major celebrity, she was a cultural icon. Naturally, her fame attracted widespread attention, including from both Jay-Z and Dame Dash. The rivalry between the two men escalated as they vied for Aliyah's affection. Though their competition initially seemed understated, it quickly spiraled into tension. Jay-Z eventually betrayed Dame in a shocking move, selling out their record label without warning. Aliyah, fully aware of the attention she commanded, reveled in it. She enjoyed playing the field and socializing with multiple suitors. The reports suggest it wasn't necessarily about physical relationships. She simply loved the attention. Dame and Jay-Z both tried to win her over, fully aware of their silent contest for her favor. Predictably, this situation was a recipe for disaster. Aliyah, living her best life, dated both men, creating an undercurrent of animosity between them. As we know, Jay-Z does not take rejection lightly. So when Aliyah ultimately chose to date Dame, things took a sharp turn for the worse. What made matters worse was that Dame didn't inform Jay-Z directly. Jay-Z found out at a 4th of July celebration, where the entire ordeal became public knowledge. This betrayal marked the breaking point, solidifying the animosity between the two men. Dame openly admitted that he knew Jay-Z would make things difficult for him moving forward because Jay's anger created real tension between them. 